Hello and welcome to our uh, next step in our uh, level design. So uh, where we left it last time we could press play and we had um, we're using the rigid body first person controller to move around and we have gaze input to a 3D object and then we can trigger our door which will play and then we can if there's a, a cube here that we can't see if we move through here we change level now we haven't set up that level and we have also um, set up Bluetooth input input so that we can um, move around on a mobile device and we're in an Android build for our VR game okay so what I want to do now is I just want to make a um, another menu another type of menu and we'll have a look at how to do that so I'm gonna go file a uh, new scene and I'm gonna save this scene and we're gonna put it in here oops uh, we're gonna call this uh, end credits okay now even though I'm using this for end credits you could use this as your startup menu or whatever you like um, so I'm going to take my camera here and delete it. I'm going to go into my standard assets and bring in my rigid body first person controller. <clears throat> and I'm going to open this out and go get my camera. And I'm just going to zero out the camera so the camera is at the origin. And I'm going to go to the rigid body and turn off gravity and press play. And basically what I should have is mouse look. Okay, so we've got mouse look, and I'm sure there's infinitely easier ways I could have put the mouse look script on. But anyway, um, in terms of just consistency, that's how we've been building our character. So this camera is tagged main camera, and we're going to go in and set this up in terms of Google VR. So we're going to go to the prefabs here. We're going to put the GVR uh, reticle pointer onto the camera. We're going to put in our uh, controller main, and we're going to put in our event system. <clears throat> and we're not going to bother putting in the emulator. Okay, and all good so far. So now what we want to do is we want to do two things. First thing I want to do is just going to go into um, Blender, and so I'm going to select everything and then delete it all. And then I'm going to add in a UV sphere, and I'm going to go into the modifier stack and add a subdivision surface modifier, and I'll put the two and hit apply, and then add another one and hit apply. So it's nice and smooth. We have lots of vertices, and we're going to go object shade smooth. Now what we're also going to do is going to select this <clears throat> with all the vertices selected. And we're going to go to mesh normals and recalculate inside. So that is all of the normals now pointing inside the sphere. So if I hit N here, um, no, sorry, it's no longer there, it's up here. So if I turn on the normals here on faces, and let's go to wireframe mode, and the hard to see there but the normals are inside okay now why is that uh, because this is what we want not some sort of um, interstellar black hole but um, we want the camera to be inside this sphere so now I'm just going to export it I'm going to go file export FBX and I'll put it on my desktop and I'll call it sphere and throw it on my desktop and hit export FBX Okay, we're done in Blender. I don't want to save it. And here I'm just going to go import new asset and go to the desktop where there is a lot of junk and get the sphere and import it. And there it is. And I had another one. We'll delete that. Um, actually, let's delete both of them because I don't know which one that was. So let's import that again. Sphere. There we go. <clears throat> so, um, in our, let's close this here, in our textures, we're going to create a new material, and we're going to call it black, 
And of course, you can put you know anything you want on this. So you can make it. Uh, we can put an image on it, etc., etc. So I'm going to take my sphere and throw it in there, and I'm going to put on the black um, material, and we'll try and make it less shiny. There we go. Okay, uh, I'm not too worried about the aesthetics of it. It's more the functionality. Now um, we're going to end up making this sphere much bigger, but we'll worry about that in a minute. So here we are, our camera is inside our sphere. Now the next thing we want to do is we want to make a menu. Um, <clears throat> so I want the menu to be able to bring me back to my main menu. And I also want the menu um, to show me a set of credits. So I can look around, I can get, you know, game created by, and then a name, um, you know, music by, etc. And then, you know, I look, I can spin around, it's VR after all, and then I've got a menu that I can look at, and there's buttons I can look at, and those buttons will bring me to somewhere. Um, so it, it, I suppose it's an alternative way of doing the buttons from what we've used um, in this level here in the main menu. So we're looking at a, a different way to do the same thing. And in this instance, we're going to use the pre-made buttons in the Unity UI. So I'm going to take the UI here, I'm going to go, I'm going to add a component and I'm going to add a canvas. And we're going to, first of all, I'm going to call this <coughs> um, end credit MM, main menu. And we will double click on it and there it is there. And now on this, we're going to create a button. And we're going to rename this button, and we're going to make, keep this as a real button, and we're going to call this um, main menu, because this is going to bring, so our, the level that we made was called main menu, it's going to be a 3D menu, so this is going to bring us to the main menu, and we'll change this text here in our button to main menu. Very good. Now, um, so let's make this work. So first of all, as before, what we need to do is we make, need to make this a world space object and not an overlay object. If it's an overlay object, if we just go back here to overlay and we press play, it's impossible to use because um, it's going to move um, with the camera. So I can never escape the menu. It'll move as the VR headset moves. So it can't be a screen space overlay. So we're going to go to world space. Now, the world space is considerably bigger than uh, my sphere, which is way down here in the corner. So I'm going to take the canvas and I'm going to rescale it a little bit. So I'm going to make this, um, I know, 0 0.03, 0 0.03, and 0 0.03. So we're nice and small. Now we're still considerably bigger than our sphere which is there, and that's zero, 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 and the canvas is not at zero, 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 so let's zero this out. Okay, so now we can bring this forward. Um, now I'm just gonna take the sphere for a moment and just turn it off so we can see what we can see. So let's look from above and let's look at our camera which is looking in that direction. So let's then take our canvas and there it is there. Now it's obviously rotated the wrong way around. So on Y we'll go 180. Okay, so this menu is now floating in 3D space. So I can press play <coughs> and you can see it's already got complete interactivity. Now, so what we're going to do is we're just going to set this up to uh, so that we can click on this button with our gaze input uh, and transport ourselves to our main menu. But before I do that, I'm just going to re-establish my sphere, and I'm going to make this so if we on Z. Um, and on so 
There we go. So now we're inside a big black ball. So we can look around, and the reason that there is grayscale in this, and you can see banding and all sorts of stuff, is because of the light that's in there, and we'll get to that in a minute. So, our next step is to make this um, yeah, interactive, uh, but before we do that, we're just gonna, so I'm gonna add in a second button. Uh, we'll duplicate this, and we'll call this one, um, main menu we'll call it I don't know level one we'll probably have a settings um, menu as well um, but we'll won't worry about that for now and then we'll just take that and slide it below this one and then I'm going to take the entire canvas um, that I have here and I'm going to duplicate that I want to call this um, end credits list and in this one we're going to bring it over here look from the top and see if we can make them roughly equidistant so they're the scale is the same and in this one here we've got our button actually we'll need to take this and unrotate it and then this one here um so i'll tell you what we'll do we'll delete um that button and that button and what we'll create is just some ui text um, and we'll make this text um, created by um, and our color for our text is going to have to be much brighter and Take that and we will center it and center it that way and then we'll double duplicate that and move it down and we'll just call this Biffy and Biffy oops okay so <clears throat> we can press play now and we have, um, oh, they're sitting on top of each other because I have moved them on the wrong axis. So this is zero at eight, and I should have moved it then that way. So let's just play again. So, um, so we've got our interactive buttons here, and then if we turn around, we've got created by Biffy, and you can imagine we could have a menu to our right and to our left. So we have a full world that we can work in okay so now <clears throat> at this stage what we want to do is we want to sort of um, duplicate some of the the functionality um, that uh, we have um, in the other scene so uh, this end credit list I'm just going to ignore because that's just kind of a static piece of text so and I'm going to work on just this button here main menu um, and we'll just change the text on this we'll say you know, level one but that's um, we're gonna work on this button here to make it interactive so first of all the button script that's on it uh, won't work um, so let's <clears throat> have a, a quick look here so if we you know as we look over the button we are getting uh, input um, but if I left click my mouse we're not getting color changes etc <clears throat> so what we want to do is uh, not use this. So I'm going to close it up and turn it off. And what I want to do with this is I want to create um, my own script. But before I do that, we need to have a think about what other things we need. So we're going to need um, an event trigger, which is what we used before. So if we press play now, We've still got interaction, uh, and then we have our event trigger uh, sitting waiting for us. We're going to add a new event. We'll say on pointer enter. Now, um, so let's just um, write a very simple script. So I'm going to go to scripts here. Um, now we have a few scripts that we've used before, uh, and we're going to use this one again. So this is what we used to. 
put a timer on our reticule. So we're going to take this script and put it onto main menu. And this is uh, the script. We'll just double click on it here. So you can see what's in it. So we've got um, an image that we're going to put on a canvas that sits in front of our camera. And that uh, canvas will have an image on it that we can change the, the size of. And then the rest of these are um, basically used for a timer. Um, now we were sending messages. So uh, now I'm not going to delete these because this script is being used on a different level. So even though these are not going to be referenced, maybe we'll. Uh, so actually, maybe let's just make a new script and we'll copy and paste stuff out. So we'll go script, new, create, and we'll call this um, um, end credit level change. And we will open that up in Mono Develop, which I realize I've just closed, but anyway, that's okay. I'll open it in a second. And no thank you to that Blender Nation. And then we'll open this one as well. So let's just get our, our script. So we will uh, control A, control C, and then delete all that. And we'll control V. And then the first thing we need to do is change this name here, or nothing will work. So it's end. Uh, End credit level change. Okay, so we don't need those two, and we don't need ready to be true. I don't think do we? Mm, no, I don't think so. And so we can remove that. <coughs> mm, we don't need to do that. But what we will do is we, we have our scene management here. We'll change scene. So if um, I look at it for long enough, I'm going to go um, so scene manager dot load scene. And what's our scene called? Um, it's called main menu. So main menu. Okay, so I think that's right. So we'll go file and save, and we don't need whoops that line there. So um, actually, there's a few lines of code here we don't need. Um, I know we were trying all sorts of things. So and we have ready equals true, so we don't need that. Um, So, um, yeah. So when we look at uh, so when we when we have our um, with our button here, our main menu button, what we're going to get is um, if I select on the button here. So we're going to have uh, if I close my script here, we're going to have an event trigger, which is um, on pointer enter, and we're going to have a new event trigger on pointer exit. And as we did before, what we're going to get is um, when I on trigger enter, I'm going to stamp the time. So my time is time dot time. And I don't need this, I don't think. So <clears throat> then what I'm going to do, let me get rid of that. It's getting simpler all the time. So now all I'm saying is um, so fill time, which is going to be how much of the graphic we can see representing time, is represented by this little piece of mats here, uh, which is uh, denoted by this time here, so the time we started looking, plus the amount of time we want our gaze time to be. Um, and then, basically, so if enough time elapses, so if in this instance it's two seconds, so if two seconds elapses, it will be bigger than the start gaze plus the gaze time, then it'll load the scene. If at any point during that two seconds I look away from the button, I'll reset uh, the timer. 
I don't need that line there. That'll give me a compiler. Um, and why do I have that there? Time. I uh, don't need that either. <laughs> And uh, I can, yeah, these are all other things we were doing. And then I'm basically resetting the graphic to one. So it's quite simple, you know, so start timer, uh, do this if enough time passes, reset if I look away. Um, so let's uh, save that. And go file and save and not close, minimize. Okay, so we'll see if I get, I get a compiler. Ready does not exist. And, yep, it's all gone. So that's all, that's all working. Okay, so <clears throat> on our main menu, we're gonna take our script and drag it onto the script. And then, oops, and here, we're gonna add an event. And the event will be based on that script. So we need it here. And we also need it here. And then this one, when we look, we want to start the timer. And then when we look away, we want to reset the timer. And then the other thing, the only thing we're left to get then is our timer. So, in our, our you know, graphic for our timer. Now we've done that before. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to take my menu here that's behind the camera and I'm going to duplicate it. And I'm going to call this, um, so VR menu graphic, okay? I'm going to delete the text that's on it and I'm gonna put on it a, a UI image. I'm gonna take this and bring it forward. There it is there. Now we'll fix it in a moment uh, in terms of its size. Now what do we want in there, uh, in this image box here? Well, we want, um, that. Now it's too big, so I could go mucking around with stuff. I'm just going to make it smaller here. So make it 10 and 10. And it's kind of important that it's zeroed out, that it's centered. And the most important part of this is this is the child of the camera. So this, you now it's not going to change shape or anything at the moment, but when I look away, or when I look around, that this is going to move with my reticule. Okay, so now let's see if we can get this script to work. So I'm going to um, go back here to my button, and it has um, um, end credit change script. Oh yeah, so yeah, I'm confusing myself here. So <laughs> remove that component. That was the original script. So this is the one we've amended. So what do I need to put in there? Well, I need to put in uh, this. And that's all I need to put in. I just need to tell it that this is the graphic that we want to change. And this graphic is already set up to, um, sorry if I select this one here. This is, actually no, it's not set up. So I'm gonna take this and instead of it being a simple graphic, I want it to be filled and I want it to have a radial fill, and the fill amount is measured from zero to one. At zero, we see nothing, and at one, you can see it there changing around my menu. At one, we see the whole thing. So if I press play, I look around. Now it'll do an auto fill at the start, and has brought me here automatically. So let's see how we fix that. So, Oh, it's because I took out the boolean. Okay. So, I knew I did something wrong. So, ready has to equal true. And up here, we have to have, um, we'll make it, well, we don't need to make it private, so we'll make it so our public. <clears throat> we'll make it public so we can see a change in the inspector. So, we'll say uh, public uh, bool ready equals false. And then down here, 
Um, so that's when we've started it. So this needs to be also true. So if it's bigger than time, and ready equals true. And then, then here we'll have to put um, ready equal to false. So when I look away, I falsify it. So therefore, it won't just automatically run. It's false to begin with. And the only time it's true <coughs> is when the start timer is on it. OK, so let's save that. <coughs> Excuse me, and go back and have a look. So and let's press play. So I'm looking away, and I've done it again. OK, so let's go back and see what we're doing incorrectly. So, aha, OK, so I haven't set uh, my reset. So I'm going to put it in here, and I'm going to go and, and reset. OK. So this is start timer and reset timer. And OK, and we can see our Boolean ready there. <coughs> Excuse me. OK, so and let's just take this and actually, this is take the menu, shift it that way. So we're not looking at it straight away. So we can see what's going on. So there we are. Now we shouldn't auto change. So when I look at it, you can see that the, the image is starting to move. If I look away, I looked away before enough time had passed. If I go back to main menu, now I change level. And then I can do the same thing here. It's using effectively the same script. I've opened this and all in this one, I've just added the extra level of complexity of we need a, a, a collision as well. So that is, um, that's how we do it. So that's how you set up a menu, or there's lots of ways to do this, but um, this is a way. What have I done there? I set up my Z position instead of this one. Okay, so Again, I just need to be careful because I've got two seconds, so I need to look away. Okay, so I can look around here. I can see, you know, created by Biffy, turn around here. And while I have interaction with that button, it's, um, you know, I've not set it up. I haven't put any event triggers on it. But this one, I got my timer going on, and boom. Okay, so the last thing I'm going to do, apart from save this, is... I'm going to take this button here, and the last thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to change its color so that um, so which color is that? Or can I? Oh, I haven't got this turned on. Okay, actually, it'd be interesting to see if that if I can run it with that off. Okay, and it's changing color for me. Excellent. So we can leave the in earlier versions of Unity, if you left that button script turned on, these buttons wouldn't work. So, um, excellent. Even better. So, um, we can leave the button on and then we can have actual, uh, you know, an overlay um, a color change uh, when we're actually uh, looking at it. Okay, so move into red and change level. Okay, so uh, that's all we'll have. Uh, that's all we're going to do now in, in this video, and this is what we're going to be working on in class. Thanks.